quantity takeoff. Well, the art of performing a summary of quantity calculation between LAN desktop and Civil 3D, there really isn't a comparison or anything that we can contrast and see how it works in both packages. And the reason for that is the feature didn't exist in LAN. So when a project was finished in LAND, what would happen is if you were going to compute lineal feet of curb and gutter and the amount of area that mulch is going to be placed down and how much asphalt and how many light standards and trees, you had to come up with some manual method of computing those. Now you could measure some of it out of the drawing using perhaps AutoCAD commands um, or maybe it, in many cases, at least like in the offices that I'm familiar with, the construction documents would be printed and folks would sit hunched over old drafting tables with colored markers physically counting objects from one sheet to the next. So certainly uh, not having a tool, there's not much we can compare and contrast. So instead we will take the uh, drawing that we have here in LAN Desktop, let's migrate that into Civil 3D and we'll leverage the tool QTO within Civil 3D to begin those computations. So the first thing we're going to do is we will get out of this drawing and since I can't close because it's a single document interface we'll just uh, open another drawing here we'll call test. We'll leave land open in case I want to come back to that. So and even on the way out it is painful. Okay let's uh, toggle over to Civil 3D. What I'd like to do is let's open up that file. So from within that folder, I was just in it before, but just to see it here, we've got Project QTO down to the DWG folder. Here's the file we were just in, and here's a test file we just created. So I'm going to grab that one and open it up. We've got access to it in here. Now it's going to come up and tell us that the drawing was saved in an earlier version of the software and that things are going to be updated for Civil 3D. That's not a problem because our intent here is just to perform the summary of quantity calculations and we won't necessarily be taking the drawing back to land. So I'm going to close out of that. We won't worry about it. And we're in. So to perform the calculation, we'll compute a handful of things we won't turn it into uh, a huge job. I'm sure if you see a couple things computed you'll get the idea that it's, uh, it's a very powerful and easy tool. What we're going to do is we're going to begin by going to the Analyze um, Task Panel so we can see all of those things that allow us to perform analysis within Civil 3D. And we're going to come down to the QTO Manager. And the first thing that we need to do is we're going to import a pay item list. And that pay item list can be in the format of a common delimited format like out of Excel. It can also be an XML file. So we'll go ahead and open one. In our case it'll be a CSV or Excel, common delimited, and the software ships with a getting started uh, file. And then there's also a categorization file that we can leverage. Let's go ahead and open up one of the default ones for that as well. So in doing that uh, we've got a, a fairly extensive amount of pay items that can be computed based on all the different things that we would want to associate with this drawing. So in this case let's say we wanted to associate some things with the trees. Uh, I'm not going to look at them by categories. Instead we'll do a search based on the name. So we'll say pine. We'll do a quick search and I think for the trees along the front of the building there we will go with the loblolly six to eight foot high and I'm going to right click on that we'll say assign pay item and we will assign that to objects maybe we'll click this to roll up we'll assign it to this one this one and as we click we see it notating across the bottom that each one of those will have a value associated with it at the same time we could grab them as a group with a fence uh, I could uh, say for perhaps light standards let's come down and just so that rather than grabbing them all with a a tool here. Let's grab them so you know how many there are. So we're going to grab four, so we'll say eight. We could isolate the layer, but once again when we have the counts I want you, the numbers to be meaningful. So we've got eight of them selected. Let's come down and let's find light. And we are going to do a concrete foundation light pole will be good. So we will assign pay item 
and it has assigned them to all of those objects. Now, how do we know that they've been assigned? Now, that's the other thing. You know, they're, it's kind of like invisible things. How do we know that it's been there, that we've got an object associated with it? Well, there's some tools here on the side that we can say highlight objects with pay items, highlight objects that don't have anything associated, and then highlight objects with selected pay items. So in this case, our concrete foundation light pole will say highlight objects with selected pay items. Everything grays out. Now the fact that our poles are gray, it doesn't necessarily make that intuitive. Let's maybe do this instead. We'll say select objects with pay item, and we see that it goes out and grabs those those objects. All right, so maybe adjust a, a slight adjustment to the colors on the screen would make that a little bit easier to see. But uh, once we associate the pay items, we can very quickly identify what has something associated and what doesn't. So we've got some trees, we've got some light standards. Maybe let's do some lineal feet, something that's not an each quantity, maybe curb. So we'll have it go find some of those. We want uh, concrete curb and gutter in uh, concrete curb with lineal feet. I'm going to assign that pay item to, we'll grab the back of curb here, we'll grab the back of curb here. It very quickly starts to become like work. So we'll just grab a handful of these and now I almost feel compelled to grab the two up on the top here, so we will. So that is all of our back of curb. So with our back of curb selected, maybe these islands, while we're going to have curb, we're going to have some form of mulch that will be placed in there. It's not going to be a solid concrete island. So let's add a uh, value for mulch as well. So we'll go into mulch. And you know what? We don't want the acre pay item. Let's maybe do hand method square yards. And the great thing is I can use the same um, same values. Let's do assign pay item to area. I can use the same line work that we used for the backs of curbs before. So I could either pick a point and it would function kind of like the boundary command or B hatch. In this case, I'm going to select an object instead because I've already got a closed polyline. So we will associate that. You'll notice when I pick, because they are areas, there is a, a fill automatically applied such that I can see what has mulch associated with it. So certainly I'm, I'm sure as you can see as we go through this, uh, certainly a lot more user-friendly way of computing quantities. We can go through, we can go down the list and verify that everything has something associated, it, use, associated with it using the tools as before. Linear acreage, we can even add formulas to where we can apply a multiplication factor to those different uh, values that are computed. And when I'm all done, we'll complete this command here. And when I'm all done, we'll go ahead and pull a report. So whether the dialog is up or not, we'll go ahead and execute the takeoff command. Our extents can be for the drawing. They could also be, I'm going to limit it to a uh, particular area. In this case, I'm not going to worry about station and range. It's a site plan we're working on. We'll go ahead and compute that. It runs my numbers. Rather than viewing it as XML, we will view it as an HTML file. You see immediately our concrete foundation light poles. We added them to eight curb. There was about 2,700 lineal feet of that. Mulch, about 671 square yards. And then uh, we associated the loblolly pine to five trees on our particular project. So very easy, very intuitive, um, much more powerful way and certainly more productive than the old um, colored markers and using just traditional AutoCAD uh, commands to try and determine those values. So leveraging Civil 3D as a tool to supplement LAN desktop, this is a perfect example of one of those tools that can be used immediately out of the box and can make you extremely more productive.